I'm Yasmin Anan with the news from Bahrain Television. Good evening. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received today at Sakhir Palace a Grand Imam of Al Azhar, Sheikh Dr. Ahmed Al Tayyib, who is on a visit to Bahrain to chair the Muslim Council of Elders. Dr. Al Tayyib conveyed greetings of the Egyptian President Abdul Fattah Al Sisi and his wishes of further progress to Bahrain. His Majesty praised the leading role of Al Azhar in the intellectual, cultural, and civil fields and its firm stances towards Arab and Islamic issues, affirming that these stances stem from the prestigious position of Al Azhar and its role in spreading the values of Islam, moderation, tolerance and peace. His Majesty then requested the Grand Imam to convey his greetings to President Sisi, hailing the bilateral deep-rooted brotherly relations and progress in various fields, affirming Bahrain's continuous support to Al-Azhar. He also praised the scientific and intellectual contributions of the Grand Imam and his role in encouraging communication between religions and enhanced unity among Muslims. He praised the honorable stances of Dr. al tayyib towards Bahrain. His Majesty then pointed out ways to further boost a cooperation between Bahrain and Al-Azhar that serve all Muslims, especially in the fields of science, religion and education. He discussed topics concerning the Islamic world and stressed the need to coordinate with concerned bodies to enhance unity and moderation in order to face all challenges. Dr. al tayyib hailed the wise leadership of His Majesty, his firm stances and his role in supporting Arab and Islamic issues. He thanked His Majesty for his initiative to build 30 Azhar institutes across Egypt's governorates, which reflects Bahrain's firm stances towards Al-Azhar, affirming Al-Azhar's continuous stances towards Bahrain and its people. His Majesty the King received at Sakhir Palace today the Muslim Council for Elders led by Grand Imam of Al-Azhar, Sheikh Dr. Ahmed al tayyib on the sidelines of the Council's meeting in Bahrain. His Majesty welcomed the guests and thanked them for taking part in the meeting that would contribute in the development of the Islamic nations and serve the issues of Islam and Muslims. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم سيدي حضرة صاحب الجلالة الملك حمد بن عيسى آل خليفة ملك البلاد المفدى حفظه الله ورعاه فضيلة الإمام الأكبر الدكتور أحمد الطيب شيخ الأزهر أصحاب السمو والمعالي أيها الفضيلة الكرام السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته يسعدنا أن نرحب بكم في هذا اللقاء الطيب الذي نستهله بتلاوة عطرة من القرآن الكريم للقارئ علي محمد مظفر أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وقيل للذين اتقوا ماذا أنزل ربكم قالوا خيرا للذين أحسنوا في هذه الدنيا حسنة 
ولدار الآخرة خير ولنعم دار المتقين جنات عدن يدخلونها تجري من تحتها الأنهار لهم فيها ما يشاءون كذلك يجزي الله المتقين الذين تتوفاهم الملائكة طيبين يقولون سلام عليكم يقولون سلام عليكم ادخلوا الجنة بما كنتم تعملون صدق الله During the gathering, His Majesty the King delivered the following speech. Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulullah Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'i. Fadilat al-Imam al-Akbar Dr. Ahmed al-Tayyib, Sheikh al-Azhar al-Sharif, Rais Majlis Hukama al-Muslimin, Sada a'za al-Majlis, Assalamu alaykum, ورحمة الله وبركاته يسعدنا اللقاء بجمعكم الكريم لمجلسكم الموقر على أرض مملكة البحرين الذي نعتز بأهدافه السامية وقاياته النبيلة المعبرة عن الضمير اليقظ لعقلاء الأمة مشيدين بدوركم وجهودكم المخلصة خدمة للإسلام والمسلمين في وقت تتزايد فيه التحديات وتتسارع وتيرة الأحداث لتضع الأمة أمام اختبار حقيقي لصوم رصيدها الحضاري مؤكدين ثقتنا في الأوفياء من أبناء هذه الأمة الحريصين على وحدتها ومجددين دعمنا لكل الجهود الرامية إلى جمع الكلمة ووحدة الصف الحضور الكريم وإذ نفخر بانتمائنا لأمة الوسطية ومساندتنا لكل جهد يثري مسيرتها فإننا نعتز بدور المؤسسات الشامخة في رعاية النهج الوسطي الأصيل ونشيد بالدور الرائد للأزهر الشريف ورجاله في ساحة الفكر الإسلامي الداعي للاعتدال مثمنين لفضيلة الإمام الأكبر دوره الكبير في هذه المسيرة ومعبرين عن بالغ سرورنا بهذه الزيارة الكريمة كما يسرنا أن ننتهز هذه الفرصة للإعراب عن شكرنا العميق للمملكة العربية السعودية الشقيقة قيادة وشعبا تقديرا لما قدمته وتقدمه حكومة خادم الحرمين الشريفين الملك سلمان بن عبد العزيز آل سعود حفظه الله من جهود عظيمة في خدمة حجاج بيت الله الحرام تمثلت في حسن تنظيم مواسم الحج عبر عقود طويلة أثبتت للعالم أجمع قدرتها الراسخة على القيام بهذه الأمانة العظمى خير قيام سائلين الله تعالى أن يوفقنا جميعا لخير أمتنا وأمن ورقاء شعوبها والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الكلمة الآن لفضيلة الإمام الأكبر الدكتور أحمد الطيب شيخ الأزهر الشريف
We do apologize for this technical problem. Then the Grand Imam of Al Azhar delivered a speech expressing thanks for the warm welcome accorded to him on behalf of Al Azhar and Muslim Council leaders and for hosting the AIDS Council session of the Council in Bahrain. He commended the kingdom's heritage, unity, openness, and moderation. He said that foes try to disrupt the kingdom's unity through sectarianism and misuse of religion. However, Bahrain remains united because of its rich history and racial and religious coexistence and understanding. He added that the council shares uh, the perspective about uh, the kingdom. He praised His Majesty the King, his wise leadership, which safeguards the rights of the people. The Grand Imam expressed the Council's keenness on maintaining the Islamic nation's unity and its rejection of any extreme ideologies that would result in disputes and marginalization of Muslims. He added that the Council's approach at this turbulent phase is to hold on to the teachings of Islam and Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. He prayed to God Almighty to bless the kingdom and grant its unity, safety and prosperity. His Majesty the King has been granted the Lifetime Achievement Award by the United States C3 Summit. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, received the award on behalf of His Majesty from former U.S. Foreign Minister Henry Kissinger. It was granted to His Majesty in recognition of his continued achievements and incessant efforts in all fields, notably in development, respect for religious pluralism in the kingdom, and his interest in bolstering Bahrain U.S. ties at all levels, making of them an example model of relations among nations based on strong and clear foundations. The Minister of Foreign Affairs conveyed thanks from His Majesty to those in charge of the C3 summit, taking pride in this significant award which aims to bolster bonds among countries and peoples to avail all sides. He emphasized His Majesty's determination to nurture the Bahraini community model that is open on all cultures, keen on respecting the freedom of faith and reinforcing the values of tolerance and peace. For his part, Dr. Kissinger lauded the important role played by the kingdom to preserve stability and security in the region and the world, where the international community faces many huge challenges topped by extremism and terrorism. The C3 Lifetime Achievement Award for His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa was presented by one of the most respected U.S. diplomats ever, 92-year-old Henry Kissinger. Bahrain has made a considerable contribution to the economic development of the region. In recognition of His Majesty's enduring commitment to the historic relationship between the Kingdom of Bahrain and the United States of America. Accepting on His Majesty's behalf, His Excellency Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa said the award is also evidence of the enduring strength of the relationship between the U.S. and the Kingdom. And it's one of the strongest today in the whole region and it's, it's actually the cornerstone of this whole region's relationship with, its, with the United States. So we're very proud of this, we're very happy and I'm sure His Majesty will be very happy when I present him the award. The award from C3, which organizes the annual U.S. Arab Health Care and Business Summit, represents a lifetime of work by His Majesty on behalf of the Bahraini people. Uh, to recognizing His Majesty for the openness and the collaboration that he and Bahrain has created between the United States uh, and, the, and the Arab nations. Now, Bahrain in particular has a 120-year history of collaboration between the Americans through the American Mission Hospital. So it has a long legacy of uh, this relationship, which is not built on trade that came far later, but it came through two peoples, two faiths, two nations coming together through the American Mission Hospital. Also offering congratulations, the current U.S. Ambassador to Bahrain. My heartiest congratulations to His Majesty and also to the Kingdom of Bahrain. I'm very proud and honored to serve as the Ambassador there for the United States, and I look forward to getting back and uh, taking up my duties again. Summit organizers also point out that the spirit of respect and tolerance for all that His Majesty has embodied has benefited Bahrain's economy, and they hope it will be a continued legacy of the Al Khalifa family for generations to come. Reporting for Bahrain TV, I'm Marty Johnson in New York City.
The Minister of Foreign Affairs has also received on behalf of His Majesty the King an award from the Performed or Reformed Church of America, which founded the American Mission Hospital in Bahrain, as a gesture of its deep appreciation and affection for the Al Khalifa family in general and His Majesty in specific. The hospital has granted the award to an elite of supporters for healthcare development, but this time it is not only a professional award, but it stems out of personal appreciation to His Majesty for his continuous support to the hospital. U.S. and Arab relations rooted in commerce and entreprise are historic and grounded in tradition and mutual interest. These unique relations across the Atlantic have influenced and shaped strategic healthcare partnerships, strengthened alliances, supported B2B and public-private partnership. It's built on a strong foundation between the two countries, 1892. Nobody in this room was born then. This is a very old date. But since then, this relationship that started people to people and then evolved into the military partnership and then the diplomats coming and recognition and formal relationship. But this is also very personal to His Majesty. Why? Because His Majesty committed to supporting this hospital and the school in the most difficult time than when all the hospitals, and not only the American Mission Hospital, were going through a difficult time. His Majesty saw the importance of this hospital as this relationship between the two peoples and made sure that nothing will be short that they would need and not be provided to them. So this is an honor for all of us and for me especially to receive it on behalf of His Majesty. A first healthcare institution in Bahrain was established through the generosity uh, of the Al Khalifa dynasty. And this has continued through four generations. AMH has been providing healthcare for the people of Bahrain for 120 years now. And this award tonight signifies the big thank you from the Reformed Church in America to His Majesty and his forefathers for supporting the American Mission Hospital and help this partnership thrive for the future. The Speaker of the Council of Representatives, Ahmed El Mullah, has extended congratulations to His Majesty the King on being granted the Lifetime Achievement Award by USC3 Summit in recognition of his continued achievements and all efforts in all fields. The Speaker said that His Majesty the King's landmark achievements and clear contributions to respecting the principles of peace and coexistence among religions and races, reinforcing security and stability, confronting terrorism and violence, championing sustainable development issues, developing Bahrain's part partnership and cooperation with various countries and boosting diplomatic relations have all entitled him to well-deservedly win the top award. Also, the chairman of the Shura Council, Ali Al Saleh, extended congratulations to His Majesty the King on being granted the U.S. Lifetime Achievement Award in recognition of his continued efforts, notably in development, respect for religious pluralism in Bahrain, and his interest in bolstering Bahrain-U.S. ties, making them an exemplary model of relations among nations based on strong and clear foundations. Mr. Al Saleh also congratulated His Majesty on the award of the Reformed Church of America in recognition of his prominent support of the American Mission Hospital and health services in general in Bahrain, as well as His Majesty's keenness to promote freedom of religion. He asserted that His Majesty's achievements have become clear to everyone and enjoy the respect of the international community, citing His Majesty's wisdom, statementship and openness policy that respect the freedom of religion and fosters the values of coexistence, tolerance and peace. The BDF Commander-in-Chief, Field Marshal Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, chaired today the Supreme Council for Military Retirement meeting in the presence of National Chef Guard Chief, Lieutenant General Sheikh Mohammed bin Isa Al Khalifa, Interior Minister, Lieutenant General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, Finance Minister, Sheikh Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, Minister of Defense Affairs, Lieutenant General Yusuf bin Ahmed Jalahma, BDF Chief of Staff, Lieutenant General Dia bin Saqar Al Nuhaymi, and BDF Senior Officers. The meeting included discussions regarding the Council's general policies and military retirement fund by its technical and administrative regulations, in addition to discussions on investment plans related to military retirement funds finances and looking into the future policies of the military retirement fund. The BDF Commander-in-Chief praised the efforts of the members and stressed the importance of coming up with more ideas to ensure its continuous development, secure pipe pensioners' money and implement laws and systems capable of achieving more advantages. 
The Health Minister, Faiqa bint Said Al Saleh, stressed the importance of noting all opinions and suggestions regarding health services provided by the Ministry that were presented in the Government Forum. She directed to form a team to follow up on the Ministry's strategies and initiatives and make sure they are in line with the principles of the Forum and the Economic Vision 2030. The Minister stressed the need for all departments to review their plans and achievements and note all efforts and plans they are willing to achieve in the next year. She congratulated the Health Ministry on winning the optimum use of antibiotics project at the Government Forum. The Health Minister stressed the importance of using media policies that contribute to the promotion of the efforts and achievements of the Ministry. She also stressed the importance of presenting all creative initiatives that achieve the Government's vision and provide highest levels of health services quality for the people of Bahrain. In light of Bahrain's growing business capacity and because of the many options available to investors in Bahrain, Ms. Yasmin Jamali, owner of the company Event Stars, initiated the workshop in coordination with the Bahrain Chamber of Commerce to educate business owners and young entrepreneurs on the franchise business arena. Sarah Burek reports. Bahrain has taken substantial measures to enact reforms and create the most open, favorable business conditions to make it possible for investors to succeed. Fortunately, by virtue of its strategic location, Bahrain has the advantage of being an ideal gateway to the Gulf. I started, uh, the, as, you, I, as you heard, the chocolate coffee exhibition first time in Bahrain. Then I realized some of the Bahrain youth, uh, youth, how they signed the contract or the franchise is not correct or not supporting uh, them the best. That I said, I said that it's, it's needed to be launched in Bahrain to help youth to, how to, to, to consult themselves, how to sign it, uh, how to, to go, because the resources in the franchise is not easy to find. Bahrain has come to be the most mature, well-established business hub in the area, providing the most free, open, liberal and transparent environment for businesses and communities. Interesting thing about uh, Bahrain is being always perceived as a lovely city to be in and to visit, and it's att attracting actually most of the uh, people from different parts of the world. Uh, of course, especially the, the the Gulf and people from the GCC. So definitely, they are like uh, good attraction for these brands to operate and come, and also for people who have exercised how to invest in, in, in Bahrain and how to operate business in Bahrain. Definitely, they would find how. We would say it's like a business-friendly environment they could operate without, with no really much restrictions. The good thing about franchising, it, uh, it, it's not only cater what most people think, it's about food and beverage and retail and fashion. Franchising cater almost all the industries, from the oil industry to the media to the banking sectors and all other sectors. And the good thing about it, when you get in a franchise, you get all the package, it's not like you know, getting a name or getting a logo or getting something. It's getting the entire system, the entire know-how, the entire experience, everything. So bringing this experience from any part of the world to any destination like Bahrain we're talking about now, it's of course is going to bring an added value to the, to the society, to the country, to the economy and, and for, for everyone actually. Bahrain is committed to the rule of law free markets and democratic principles, serving the needs of many and above all, ensuring the long-term future prosperity of its people. It's my own coffee shop, we own the brand. Mm -hmm. Cafe Pistachio is a Bahraini brand and it is registered here in Bahrain, registered in GCC. Bahrain is very business friendly and any, anyone can start business here without any problem. This is Sarah Break for Bahrain 55. And World Tourism Day was celebrated in Bahrain yesterday in league with nations around the globe and Daniel Deporto reports. Since 1980, the United Nations World Tourism Organization has celebrated World Tourism Day on September 27th. Bahrain was just one of many countries around the world to mark the occasion yesterday with a variety of events held at different locations across the kingdom. The Bahrain Authority for Culture and Antiquities marked the occasion with a special full-day program at the Bahrain National Museum. We have taken the theme and applied it to museums, making it more accessible to people of all ages, of all uh, uh, backgrounds, tourists, nationals, locals. Uh, and we have seen a great turnout today. We had a program from this morning, starting with tours in the museum, and we have focused on uh, the elderly community and orphans and uh, young uh, audience. Uh, we have then 
had a series of, of, of films running in the, in the theater of the museum uh, with lunch and now we have a, a musical performance uh, outdoors as you can see uh, to conclude the day. This year's theme was Tourism for All, which emphasizes universal access to cultural hotspots and other such places of interest. Bahrain's elderly, orphans and people with physical and mental disabilities were specially catered to, in line with the noble theme. The theme of this year, Tourism for All, makes us reconsider uh, the design of museums, their accessibility, uh, whether you know, physically or intellectually as well. Now museums are trying to be more user-friendly in terms of the information they provide. Uh, in addition to the access facilities, the National Museum here is fully capable of accepting people with disabilities, wheelchair access and so forth. And we're trying to enhance that uh, uh, integration of, 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 of such ease of accessibility in, in, in all our sites and site museums as well that are currently in place and planned in the future. It has been a wonderful day of celebrations here in the Kingdom for World Tourism Day and hopefully the theme of Tourism for All will leave a lasting impression going forward. Reporting for Bahrain Television, I'm Danielle Deporto.